Hey everyone, this is a video tutorial for how to build an icosidodecahedron. Now there are two good ways to build this shape and you end up with basically the same thing. Now one method is good for smaller versions and one method is good for larger versions. I'm going to start out showing you how to do, how best to build smaller versions and I will post an annotation and you can see where to skip to if you just want to build a larger version. So, this is how you build the smaller version. You need um, 40 stacked rings, and the number of magnets in the ring needs to be a multiple of three. Here I have nine magnets per ring, but you could go up to 12 or maybe 15, um, or even down to six if you wanted to. And then you can take these and cut them up into stacks of two, and then pinch the top stack into a triangle, like that. So you end up with a subunit that looks like this. And you, and you make 20 of these out of the stacked rings. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, and I'm not sure if I mentioned before, but you need 20 of these. And then you also need 12 um, hollow pentagons. And you want the outer edge of these pentagons to be the same number of magnets as the number of magnets on the edge of these triangular pieces. So here, with rings of 9, you can see the triangle has an edge length of 4. So this hollow pentagon also, you want it to have an edge length of 4 and you want it to be two rows thick. So you can just make a pentagon. I guess I'll show you real quick. You can make a pentagon like this. However big you need it to be. I made this one a little bit too big. And then just take out the middle until whatever you're left with is two rows. And that's how you would make those. But I already have 12 of them, so I didn't actually need that one. So now what you do is you take these triangular pieces and you attach... You can see there's a tiny little triangle there and there, and you can attach them together like that. And you can keep going like that, and you can make kind of a icosahedron-like shape out of them. And so you end up with this, which is, I guess, technically already an icosidodecahedron, but it's not, it wouldn't be the same kind as what I would build with these other subunits. And it's not very stable either. So to make it more stable and to make it look a little bit more symmetrical, you now take these pentagon rings and you lay these down so that they stack against the sides of these triangles. And they will just pop right down into these pentagonal holes. And they should just stick right in and go ahead and add all 12 of them on. And there you go. You have a small icosidodecahedron. And that is how you do the method for building the small ones. And that's definitely the simpler of the two methods, but it really just doesn't work very well for larger sizes. So, okay, now on to the larger method. And for that, you need 30 of these subunits. And the way that you make them is you start off with eight stacked rings, and I find that stacked rings of 10 works the best for building this subunit. So that's what I'm gonna use. So you cut it up into four pieces and you flatten that out into long straight pieces. And then you attach two together like this. And then you do the same thing to the other two. 
And then you can attach both of those to each other, so you end up with this. And now you need to take uh, just like a short chain and you make a little square and you put that right down in this middle part. Just like that. And you can kind of pinch right here to make those magnets align right. And now you'll see there's kind of a gap here and then also on the other side. And you want to put a single magnet into each of those little holes. Just like that. And then on the other side, just like that. And it should look like this on the underside. And now what you want to do is take a card and slide it right in here in between these magnets. And sometimes you need to wiggle it around a little bit. But then when you take it out, it'll look like this. And this is the right um, arrangement for the subunit. And now that you've made this, you can adjust it to whatever edge length you want. And for this shape, what I've done is I've removed six magnets from each of these edges. So you end up with the subunits that you see. Just like this. And if you remove much more than that, then they start to get pretty unstable. But, uh, and at that point it's probably better to use the small method. So anyways, so what you do now is you take these and you can attach them together by bringing these magnets on the points to the sides of each other and just kind of pushing them together until they join together like that. And you want to make sure that there's a definite acute angle and an obtuse angle on each one of these subunits. And the acute angles go together to form triangles. Just like that. And the obtuse angles always go towards the pentagons. And you just keep going around with these subunits until you've completed the shape. And there you go. That is how you build a larger icosidodecahedron. And I'm not going to smash the big one because I'm about to use it for another video, but I will smash the small one.